Hey there, Michael here again. Uh, really excited to talk about something that's really important today, and that is, for me, the five basic principles of top-notch nutrition. Now, in our society today, there is so much information out there when it comes to nutrition. The big one that's kind of gripped us for the last decade or so is keto, right? Which before it was called keto, it was called Atkins. And there's a bunch of other diets out there. You got the four-hour body diet, peanut butter diet. You got intermittent fasting. You have vegan diets. You have carnivore diet, right? There's a lot of, there's so much out there when it comes to food, so much information. And what I want to do for you today is just break it down so that you know exactly what it is that you need when it comes to nutrition. Make it simple, right? And that's actually, that's not one of the principles, but first and foremost, it should be simple. So before we get in there, I just want to talk a little bit the history, right? So obesity has been, it hasn't been quite the issue that we have right now, but it's always been a thing. One of the first ever articles published about obesity was written by a guy named William Banting, and that was in 1960, or 1863, my apologies, 1863. Banting wrote his letter on corpulence addressed to the public. And it's really powerful actually in this blog. If you read the blog, I link the actual article and there's a lot of really powerful things we can take away from how he was able to overcome obesity, to lose weight. Uh, the biggest things being that he changed up the types of food he was eating. Uh, he got rid of a lot of the things that we know aren't so good for us, including alcohol, sugar, uh, potatoes, interestingly enough, butter, dairy, bread. Uh, I already mentioned sugar, but we should probably mention it again. And he supplemented that by adding in vegetables and fruits and nuts and seeds and healthy meats. These are things that we see when it comes to diets. Again, there's a lot of different products out there and people saying different things, but really eating those foods that are high in fiber, which we'll get to that, that's one of the principles, high in protein, it's just so important to do those things so that our blood sugar is not erratic. And I just want to let you know, right, I mean, if you're dealing with obesity, if it's something that you're struggling with, you're not alone. You're not obviously not the only one right now. And there's been people for hundreds of years who have been trying to figure this thing out. So then the other side of this article that I just want to touch on briefly is the pace at which Banting lost weight. So in the article, he has a table. He kept track of his weight every week, and he averaged losing one pound per week. Say it with me, one pound per week. There's so much bullshit out there about trying to lose weight so fast. And if you think about it, you did not put on an excess 50 pounds overnight. You're not going to be able to take it off overnight and expect those results to be sustainable, right? So really looking at the big picture game, dedicating a certain amount of time, maybe six months, a year, to doing this the proper way is gonna set you up for success and sustainability down the road. So the two big takeaways from Banty's experience, one, changing up the foods that we're eating is gonna help out a lot. We need to eat foods that are higher in fiber, which we'll talk about. And then number two, and this is a really important one, the pace and how quickly we lose weight is so important. And being able to dedicate a certain amount of time six months to a year to doing it properly is going to help you sustain it for the long run, just like I did. So without further ado, let's get into the principles, five principles of top-notch nutrition. The five basic principles when it comes to top-notch nutrition from a health coach, from me, number one, the most important thing is to eat real food. Now, again, there are so many different products out there. If we just took corn, soybeans, and wheat and looked at all the different products that those different foods make up. I'm not saying there's an issue with them, but a lot of it is the same thing repurposed in different ways. And then they throw in sugar and oil, and it's honestly just a bunch of shit. It's garbage. Like, it, it doesn't do anything to help us with our health. It, in fact, it's what's contributing to obesity, to poor gut health. So we need to eat real foods, right? So what does that look like? Again, like Banting mentioned, fruits, vegetables, leafy greens are great. Uh, potatoes, potatoes are totally fine. If you have an intolerance, maybe not like myself, but potatoes are great. Uh, rice, whole grains, oats. I eat oats almost every day. So I used to eat potatoes every day. I learned to have an intolerance and instead of potatoes, now I just eat oats and it's great. I love oats. Beans and lentils are really powerful. They're high in protein and in fiber, which we'll get to. Unprocessed meat. So not McDonald's, right? Not like deli ham that has a bunch of sodium nitrite and nitrates added to preservatives that are carcinogenic that we know are harming us. Real meat. So, you know, uh, Dr. Mel, for example, my sister, she orders a cow from a farmer in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, right? Like I don't go quite to that level, but I do buy organic real meat. That's really important. If you are going to 
them eat meat, make sure it's organic, grass-fed, the good stuff per se. And then nuts and seeds. Nuts and seeds are probably one of the most underrated foods Again, allergies aside, they are really high when it comes to fiber and protein and good healthy fats, right? Omega-3s, especially, uh, depending on what kind of nut you're eating. So just eat real foods. That's what it comes down to. That's the first principle. Number two, be conscious of what you're eating and read the ingredients. So uh, we're humans and we're living in the 21st century. And like I said, there's a lot of products out there. A lot of things taste fucking delicious. I'm just going to throw it out there like Cold Stone ice cream. I mean, fuck yeah, that's good stuff. What I want you to understand is that it's okay to treat yourself. It's okay to have those things. You know, some people can get away with it daily. It really depends on where your health, your gut health, and, and where everything is intersecting. However, be aware of what it is that you're eating, right? If you're mindfully going through and just consuming whatever it is that's in front of you just because it tastes good and you have goals like to lose weight specifically, that might be a little bit of a disillusioned reality. I might have to make some changes, right? Find some more whole foods. Um, read the ingredients, understand what it is that you are putting in your body. And if you are in the grocery store and see something you don't know, do a Google search, right? We all got... Uh, cell phones nowadays, we can look up anything anywhere. Educate yourself on what you're consuming before you do it and just be cognizant of it, right? I understand that we go out to eat, uh, we go to parties, there's things that go on where we can't always know 100% what it is that we're eating, but consistently knowing that we are putting high vibrational good things, not a bunch of shit added into it, good foods into our body, that's really going to help us, especially when it comes to weight loss, uh, to getting our energy back, because a lot of those things can drain our energy. It's just a, a truth of where we're at. So read the ingredients, be cognizant of what you're eating. That's number two. Number three, and this might be the most important. I don't know. All these are the most important. Number three principle to top-notch nutrition is to eat more fiber. A lot of people thought I was probably going to say protein there. There's a lot of talk about protein nowadays, but people, we are not focusing on fiber. And fiber is probably the most underrated nutrient that we consume as humans. So what is fiber? Fiber is derived from plant-based foods, and it's essentially the part of the plant that we don't break down and extract nutrition from. So fiber is the stuff that gets our digestion moving, right? We as a society are chronically deprived of fiber and water, which well, I'll make a video about water some other time. The a standard person, so a standard American male, should be eating approximately 30 grams of fiber per day. Now, it depends on your body mass and how active you are and all that, but 30 grams of fiber a day would be a really good number for most people to hit. We're eating less than half of that. Most people in America are eating only between 10 and 15 grams of fiber per day. And that kind of stems back into number one, right? The foods that are readily available, they're ultra processed. They are, ingredients are stripped of their, what they naturally really are. And they're kind of like these Franken foods that don't have the nutrients, especially fiber, that we truly need. Now, within the blog, you can find a couple articles that they have done that shows evidence of how important fiber is for health. But just a few of the benefits, it's going to help you increase your lean muscle mass, which will also increase your, increase your bone density, right? That's going to, that alone is going to help your body composition, help you burn body fat and have more musculature, which is really important for healthy aging. Uh, it's been found to decrease BMI, to decrease relative body fat and visceral fat, which we know, again, we'll have more future education about visceral fat, but that's kind of the silent killer. Fiber is also linked to decreased fasting glucose and insulin levels. And overall, the consumption of fiber and having adequate fiber every day is one of the most, if not the top thing nutrition wise when it comes to healthy aging. So a lot to be said about fiber. I'll probably go way more in depth about fiber some other time in the future. But for right now, just know uh, up in your fiber is another important thing. And again, if you're following principle number one, eat real foods, you're going to be getting more fiber. So it's not like you have to be seeking it out or taking fiber pills. Just, you know, if it comes down to a Snickers bar or an apple, just eat the fucking apple. Have the Snickers later. Okay. Number four, calorie consciousness. Now, in my journey of losing over 160 pounds, keeping it off for over a decade, and being consistent with my current weight, I have counted calories. I want to, I would love to say never, but there was one time when I started counting calories, and that's actually because my sister started bodybuilding and told me about this app called My Fitness Pal. And I tracked calories for about a day and a half, and I got bored with it and I stopped. That is not to say that calories are not important because when it comes down to physics, when it comes down to the laws of nature, if we are consuming more calories than we are expending every day, we are going to gain weight. 
if we are eating less calories than we are burning each day, we are going to lose weight. And with that, weight in and of itself is one objective measure that can be helpful, but it does not tell the entire story. It is really important to understand that our weight is how much mass we have, but doing something like a bioimpedance test, or if you really want to like get down to knowing the, your, your actual levels of different types of mass within our body, you have to do like the underwater scale thing. If you want to drop a couple grand and do that, go ahead. When it comes to aging, when it comes to being healthy, when it comes to metabolism, we want to have more muscle mass and be in a healthy range when it comes to body fat, right? Obesity is just being over a BMI of 30. And I know, again, BMI is not a perfect measure, but it does kind of tell us a little bit of the story. Same with weight. It's not perfect, and it does tell us a little bit of what might need to occur. So long story short here, I'm kind of ranting, and if you know me, I'm not the most linear at times, but being conscious of the calories consumed and the calories burned each day is going to help you lose weight. You need to know like, okay, if you have been plateaued at a certain level for, uh, for a long time, I see some clients plateau, we might need to change some, some things up. We might need to maybe find a different type of grain to supplement your breakfast with. We might need to find uh, maybe something that's less fatty when it comes to the type of meat you're eating, whatever it may be. If you are consuming too many calories, you won't lose weight. And there are things to be said about uh, muscle mass in the equation as well. So long story short, if your goal is to ultimately lose weight, you have to eat less calories than you burn. And eating things like fiber and whole foods and adequate protein are going to help you get more muscles, right? More muscles to burn more fat and lose weight at a more rapid pace, right? It's going to catalyze the process. I realized the calorie consciousness um, as I was writing this blog out and as I was making this video like I need to just go further in depth with that so be on the lookout for more about my you know I, I I'm the only person the only coach I know who is doing this calorie consciousness perspective and I'm going to go further in depth with that in the future so hang tight on that the fifth point and again maybe maybe not the most important point all five of these points are very very important when it comes to top-notch nutrition but number five and most importantly is to have grace with yourself when it comes to food. Now I know you have visions and goals and what it is that you want to do and understand that it is okay to have a piece of pizza or two or even three at times. It's okay to have some ice cream. It's okay to go out with friends and have a couple beers. There are so many joys in life beyond just nutrition that food is a part of. Food is a communal experience and it has been for thousands of years. So going out and indulging time to time is healthy for us, right? We're gonna be doing things for our social health that's super important, for our mental health, connecting with others, making friends, making relationships, right? A lot of times these things are accompanied by foods that maybe aren't most in line with your diet per se or with what it is that you're trying to do. And one meal, one night out is not gonna completely derail you. To be able to have no judgment of yourself, to be able to allow different feelings like guilt or shame flow through you and not act on them is powerful when it comes to food because there's so much messaging telling us that we need to be perfect, we need to do it this way, and if we don't, we're not going to get there. That's fucking bullshit, okay? The most important thing I can say with food is to approach it from a space of love, of joy, and to let the experience just be what it is and, and be happy with it, okay? If you are putting yourself into a sympathetic state fight or flight if you're freaking out like oh my gosh does this have like gluten in it oh my does this have dairy in it and obviously I'm cognizant that there are people who have extreme allergies right so some people you do have to be like that but if you're someone who's just trying to watch it and maybe lose some weight and you don't have those really bad intolerances or, or allergies like me I mentioned earlier I'm intolerant to potatoes but I'll still eat potatoes if I'm out at a restaurant because potatoes are fucking good and I love them and I know that my body is intelligent and can process them when it has to right the big picture here when it comes to this point number five having grace is to just ex experience the moment be in the moment, enjoy the people you're with, enjoy whatever it is that you're doing, and know that one time, one day is not going to throw you off. Your results are going to come from being consistent the majority of the time, okay? So don't forget to live life. It's a really important thing to do. I thank you for tuning in today, for checking out the blog. Reach out to me. Let me know what questions you have, what comments. If you think that what I just said is a bunch of idiocracy, let me know. You can have a conversation. And above all else, just remember that no matter where you're at, what your vision is, what your goals are, you can do this, right? I'm here for you. Reach out. And as always, keep inspiring. Thank you.